felt like that to even survive. Right. And Michael Eisner did have a couple of, you know, of opportunities and a bite at that apple and just never bit because he just, he just couldn't see it. He couldn't see how Marvel integrated into the Disney company um, in a way that made sense to him. And, Hey, give it up to Bob Iger. He had the vision. He said, hey, you know what? We can make this work. And man, oh man, it's paid off in spades. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've and i heard that same argument um, amongst the community too, the fan community that like, mm -hmm. well, Marvel doesn't really fit with Disney. And I, you know, I got to disagree with Eisner and a lot of the fans that say that m these superheroes don't really mesh with Disney and, and the branding because what is Disney? I mean, Disney's yeah. all about... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, princesses and cowboys and, and what have you. And superheroes are kind of a modern iteration of those things in a way. You know, yeah. it's I, I think it fits perfectly. I, I really do. I think I think it's kind of like, you know, like, you know, in the, the boomers, <laughs> as they call them, had cowboys and John Wayne and, mm -hmm. and, and Davy Crockett. But this generation has mm -hmm. Iron Man and Captain America and, mm -hmm. and Falcon and, and Bucky and it's 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 the it's the natural evolution of those heroes in a lot of ways you know what i'm saying i i feel like it's so disney it's the modern mythology which disney has you know i mean they, they've engaged in for almost close to 100 years now uh it's the modern folklore the modern kind of uh, epic storytelling and yeah i i can definitely you know it's it's crazy because there, there was a world where Pixar wasn't part of Disney, and right. it's just like, man, how ca I can't even think of <laughs> Pixar being part of Disney. Well, now it is. You know, right. there was a, there was a time when you know Star Wars was, you know, not part of Disney, and and, and now it is. You know, n now it is. But you know, those seeds were set in 1987 when Star Tours was was going in and stuff like that, and you kind of see that. I, I know there's a big disconnect with Marvel in terms of Star Wars, in terms of Disney, but you know, hey, it's 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 it's. I I think it's I think it's purely Disney. I think it's um, I it's just a great canvas for the mouse to to to, to work and bring these stories to life, and they've done it extremely well if you if you if you were worried that disney would taint marvel marvel tank disney that really hasn't happened and it's it but it's been mutually beneficial and it's right. especially beneficial for us fans so i think it's great yeah no absolutely i concur and, and and another thing too is like this whole thing about like yeah I, i've heard the argument too like i can't picture this being disney or that being disney but Walt was all about expanding what it means to be disney from the yeah. beginning you know it wasn't you know, Disney wasn't about animated films until it was, right? Yeah. Disney Disney wasn't about live action until it was. Mm -hmm. it was uh, Disney wasn't about theme parks until it was. Yeah. You know, and it, it is constantly, even under Walt, what it meant to be, quote unquote, Disney was constantly expanding. And I think Bob Iger, to his credit, he kind of took that philosophy and did the same thing. He, he, he expanded the barriers as to what it means to be Disney. And now superheroes are synonymous with Disney, you know, and now you can't imagine anyone else having Marvel. You can't imagine anyone else having star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to Iger's credit, that's one thing he's done in the, in, in the past, you know, what, 15 years or so that I think was, was pretty brilliant. I think so too. And Listen, folks, um, as the great Paul Fries would say, there's no turning back now. They're part of the Disney family, guys. <laughs> Gonna have to let them in. You gotta let them in. <laughs>